So uh, with that background in mind, it provides uh, three kinds of the different uh, services, different classes of the services in the IP networks, particularly guaranteed and uh, uh, adaptive and the best effort uh, service model. So let's take a look, in, uh, look at a picture of how the uh, components of the uh, router would look like in order to provide uh, this kind of the quality of service. Uh, so in our previous discussion, we understood that the router has got two typical things. One is the control plane and the data plane. And the control plane operation is not real-time operation. And the data plane operations are real-time operations. So what is happening in the control plane? You basically, you are constructing the routing table. You use some routing algorithm, bring the information from your neighbors. Utilizing that you construct the routing table, basically that is also called as FIP information. You construct that FIP information, that is an offline exercise. It can run in the background and in the data plane, the packets are coming and you got uh, a routing table and you are trying to match the uh, uh, incoming packet against the uh, routing table entries and uh, try to make a quick decision as, as quickly as possible. That is with respect to the uh, forwarding of the packets. But we have brought a second component into the routing uh, router, which is called as a quality of service. So what are the additional things that are coming into the router to provide these quality of service uh, uh, services to the different applications are the following. I'm going to add these many components to the control plane. Uh, specifically, there is a management agent. So using which the application can tell this is my quality of service requirement, the parameters that we looked at, be it the bandwidth, be it the throughput, be it the delay, all of them can be specified through this management uh, agent. And there is a reservation uh, setup model, which reserves the resources all along the path across the uh, different routers. And there is also a component called the admission control, which decides when a new flow starts, whether to admit that particular flow or not to admit that particular flow. So if you decide what your application will tell you, what is its requirement, you decide whether to admit or not to admit. If you decide to admit, then you reserve the resources between the source and destination two endpoints and then load this uh, entire information, what is being reserved, what is being uh, the requirement of the application to a database called as the traffic control database. So this uh, traffic control database is consulted uh, by the uh, data plane to make certain uh, choices of the transmission. So you have the traffic classifier which will identify what to do. A bunch of rules are there using which you can decide uh, whether to uh, forward this packet, drop this packet with the priority and all that. And then you have something called in the data plane called as a packet scheduler, which actually picks the packets in certain order from different queues and uh, schedule it for the transmission. And the uh, input for this scheduling decision is coming from this traffic control database. Once you make that reservations and uh, the admission control decisions, and you can tell your scheduler, this is what you should do. So taking reference from that traffic control database, the scheduler can pick up the packets from different queues in a certain order to meet the quality of service requirements of different applications. So that is what is all there inside the router uh, when you go with the integrated service architecture. So uh, I said that uh, integrated service uh, model actually uses the reserves the reservation. There is a protocol uh, uh, designed for uh, reserving resources inside the network. So that protocol is called resource reservation protocol. In short, this is also called as the RSVP. Uh, RSVP uh, uh, does the reservations inside the routers. So if, let's say in this diagram, S is the source or the sender and R is the receiver and uh, there are a bunch of routers inside the network and uh, the reservation process starts from the sender transmitting uh, 
a packet called as the path packet or a path message and its job is to uh, find out what is the path that is supposed to be taken so for example should i go to router r1 r2 r3 r4 and then to receiver r r1 r5 r6 and then to receiver r2 i don't know what is the path to, uh, to be taken so if you identify the path subsequently you can actually reserve the resources so the path message originates from the sender and it identifies a particular sequence of routers to be visited to reach the receiver and the routers will remember this is the uh, this packet has gone from this from so and so source and uh, it is uh, uh, it has come from so and so upstream router and so on so the actual reservation start in the receive uh, reverse direction the receiver initiates the reservation after having received the path message from a particular source the receiver initiates the reservation of the resources in the reverse direction so this reservation is telling what is the uh, the parameters required what is the bandwidth required what is the throughput required in a half, half fashion so for example the receiver tells this router that i want a 1 mbps bandwidth that is my quality of service requirement and this router will depending upon whether it can provide 1 mbps bandwidth to this receiver or not you can say either yes or no if it says yes it confirms that yes i can provide you 1 mbps of the bandwidth it in turn transmit this another reserve message to the upstream router and then it ask okay i want 1 mbps the bandwidth this router can again decide independently whether 1 mbps bandwidth can be reserved for this particular uh, transmission or not and so forth so the point is path messages in the forward direction identify the path to be taken or in other words what are the places in which you require the resources to be reserved and the reserve message in the reserve, reverse direction will actually reserve the resources uh, uh, for that particular transmission and the setup or the resource reservation is going to be complete only when all the paths uh, all along the path from the receiver to the sender the resources are being reserved and then the confirmation message is actually go, uh, sent back to the receiver okay reservation is now complete you can now start receiving the conversion that the application can actually utilize the uh, tra the transmission and then could meet uh, uh, it can run uh, using this setup so that is what the resource reservation protocol all about an interesting thing about resource reservation protocol is although in this example this is a single sender and the single receiver are there and we are trying to reserve the resources for that particular single transmission it might also happen that more than one receivers are also interested in the same conversation maybe if i can call this as r1 another computer here in this space and r2 is also interested in the same uh, transmission sent by the same sender yes so uh, when the uh, path message transmitting now uh, the uh, resources may be reserved for not only for r1 but also for the r2 so if there are more than one receivers connected to a particular router the router where the conversation or transmit two transmissions are merging the uh, the next uh, the it can the router which is where the conversation merging can ask the next upstream router to with a requirement which is the sum of the requirements set by or asked by the r1 and r2 it not necessarily always some but in some format whatever is the requirement r1 and r2 are set uh, so either it can be if it is a bandwidth it can be some of these two if it is the transmission rate uh, or the delay it can be maximum of uh, uh, sorry minimum of these two or it can be anything so it can decide what is the requirement by r1 what is the requirement by r2 and based on that uh, an aggregate requirement may be sent by the uh, router particularly if this is the setup this router can set let's say this is asking for 1 mbps this is asking for another 1 mbps 
and together it might ask two mbps uh, or the it might one one of them is asking one mbps so the second one is asking for two mbps uh, so using the two mbps the maximum transmission rate uh, you can also meet the one mbps requirement so any any how both of them are interested in the same transmission so i can ask a peak rate of 2 mbps to my upstream router something like this so the point is when the two uh, transmissions get merged there is a multicast kind of the environment so the router where the two uh, transmissions are getting merged the the router in charge of that can ask the next upstream router the based on what exactly is the requirement in order to meet the two re different requirements what exactly is required from the upstream router so accordingly this resource, resource reservation protocol has been designed to meet to certain uh, uh, operations one is the requirements from the different receivers can be heterogeneous so as we saw in the previous example r1 is asking for some bandwidth r2 is asking for some other bandwidth so you can actually ask it to work with a different uh, uh, kind of the requirements so it support the heterogeneous uh, the heterogeneity in the uh, quality of service requirement and it can also support multicast and group uh, transmissions and interestingly it is also been designed to uh, adapt to the topology changes so for example if my sender is here and the receiver is here and you have got a bunch of routers in between through which the current transmission is going on and for some reason if this link is broken and the rsvp can find out alternative path from this source to same destination through some other intermediate router or by changing the path of the conversion and uh, Uh, making a press reservation uh, to meet the quality of service requirement so at any point of time uh, because of the link broken or the uh, some new node joining the network at any point of time if the topology of the network changes then the rsv can adapt to those changes and still maintain the ongoing conversation and uh, it is also been designed to put less overhead on the routers particularly uh, with the concept something called as the uh, soft state uh, it actually puts limited overhead on the router these are some of the uh, salient features of the rsvp so let's uh, spend a minute on what are the different messages that the rsvp has got in order to operate uh, or in other words in its uh, reservation i'll what kind of the message it actually transmits two of them we have already seen one is the path message which goes from the sender to the receiver to identify the path uh, that the reservation should be done in the reverse direction and the reservation message goes from the uh, receiver to the sender in the reverse direction uh, along the path uh, of uh, the path message has taken and the confirmation messages are sent in the reverse direction reservation against the reservation request the uh, the confirmation messages are sent this is the reservation message then this is the confirmation message uh, to confirm that whatever is asked for has been reserved and uh, there are some occasionally some kind of error message that might pop up uh, if, uh, that kind of the message is called resource uh, reservation error messages this can be either the path error message or reservation error message so if the path message cannot be uh, transmitted to the receiver then the error message that is generated is called as the path error message if the error is generated during the transmission of the reserve message in the reverse direction that is called as the reservation error message it is either it can be either of these two and the last type of the message that the rsvp uses is something called the tear down message when you are done with the conversation when you want to end the transmission you tell the network that whatever has been reserved can be uh, now released by sending a tear down message so these are the different kinds of the messages in different contexts these messages are used
So with that uh, uh, background, the integrated service model primarily uses RSVP as a signaling protocol to reserve the resources for a different transmission. Uh, we'll spend a minute on understanding what are the advantages and disadvantages of the integrated service model. So the advantage of the integrated service model is one of the service uh, that it offers is a best effort service that is exactly same as the IP model, uh, the default service model of the TCP IP. So there is no change that is required to provide this kind of the service model on top of the uh, TCP IP. So uh, there is no changes that are happening inside your router to provide service. To meet the requirement of the other two classes, you need to bring in the few changes. And uh, uh, for the best effort service, at least you don't have to change any of the things inside the router, the forwarding information base, the way control uh, plane works, the way data plane works, uh, any of them uh, will not be changed. So that is the advantage that you get. And the disadvantage of the integrated service model is uh, sometimes the end-to-end -end guarantees particularly end-to-end -end time guarantees are hard to predict and meet. So because of the some other things, the things might get changed inside in between two different routers in the middle of the uh, television, then it might affect the uh, overall transmission. And the other thing is, and is this reservation model because you have to every time you have change in the requirement, new uh, flow is coming, you need to do the reservation all along the path and uh, already several conversations might be flowing through those intermediate routers. So having an explicit reservation for every flow uh, in the entire uh, path may not be uh, 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 scaling well when you have particularly large number of the conversation going. So providing that kind of explicit reservation for a very large number of the Converge parallel conversion becomes cumbersome. So that's why it does not scale well. So we have alternative models for meeting such kind of the requirements when we have massive number of the parallel conversation and things without doing explicit reservations. Can I provide the quality of service? So that we will see in the subsequent lectures.